everyone, my name is Birdbird and today we are talking about optimization. So did it ever occur to you that you're working in harmony and then everything is so slow? Well, this can be caused by many, many, many things. That's why there's no one size fits all solution for that. So even at my job at Toon Boom, it's not that easy when people ask me, oh, can you optimize my scene because I'm trying to play this rigged scene and it's not playing fast enough. And I'm like, eh, it's not that easy to come up with like a solution because the context matters and there's many things that can make your harmony scene slower. So today I'm gonna try to at least go through like the easiest step for you to look at if you see that your scene is running a bit slower, okay? So scene optimization, let's go. <laughs> so my go-to when I see that harmony is very slow for someone is to go to the preferences. So I'm gonna go to edit, preferences. In Mac it's a bit different place, but you know where it is. So preferences, I will navigate to OpenGL. Because today's tutorial focuses just on the live rendering, like OpenGL, not rendering your frames for exporting, like when you work in harmony, like if it's slow, what do you do? So you head over to OpenGL, and if you see that your scene is slow, you can go to the full scene anti-aliasing section. And in the number of samples, you're going to see number of samples used for full scene anti-aliasing, values of blah 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 are commonly used. A high value will smooth the line more, but demands more from the graphic card. So display performance may suffer. That means the higher the number, the slower your scene will get. But also the higher the number, the more pretty your scene will be. But honestly, who cares? Like when I work in cutout animation, let's be honest, I just set that thing to zero. You can even disable the anti-aliasing altogether in there. But note that if you change that, you will need to restart the application. While hand-drawn animators need to have a high anti-aliasing setting, it is not a necessity for cutout animators to have high anti-aliasing. Cutout animator who observes a slowdown in their scene can open the preference window and set their scene's anti-aliasing number of samples to a lower setting. It will give the line work kind of like very crisp visual, so it will not be very smooth, but it will considerably speed up your scene. Especially for like making small manipulations in your rig here and there. Like trying to move little things, it's gonna make it so much faster if your anti-aliasing is non-existent or very slow. The second thing is having too many items in your timeline. So I've talked about that many times before, but if you have a very, very big timeline, Harmony and your computer need to process all that layer information and it does get heavy. So if you're doing cutout with a very heavy rig, there's no getting around it. Like you need to see your rig. However, if you are really struggling with your machine, like the scene is just going bonkers, you can set like a display to see just the head, for example. So I'm gonna go here and see my character's head um, here and I'm gonna give it a display. And then even though in my scene, I see the whole body, if I'm using advanced displays, I can be like seeing my character here in the camera and in the timeline, I could see, for example, just the head. This is going to lower the amount of layers you see in your timeline considerably. And again, it's gonna speed up your scene a lot. If you have only like five layers, don't bother. But if you have a full heavy rig or six of them in the same scene, um, yes, showing your six rigs in your timeline is gonna slow down your scene a lot, okay? So be smart about what you show in your timeline and you're gonna see a difference. Same thing for your camera, honestly. If you don't need to see the seventh character in your scene, use displays. And what I'm using all the time is advanced display, so that's why I have a display here, a display here, and I have this main display over here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically it's just into the preferences, into advanced, you can get a advanced display settings, okay? So be mindful of what you show in your timeline because it does make it slower for your computer to process. The other thing that is gonna be very detrimental to your playback is the thumbnails. So if I take this piece of hair in my node view, you see I have just the drawing layers and if I look at them in my timeline, I also just have the drawing layers. That is lighter. If, however, in my node view or in my timeline, I press on T to see like the thumbnail. Um, it might sound silly, but your computer does need to render all these images and show them to you kind of in real time. So it does ask a lot of your computer. So if you see that your scene is slow, I recommend closing any thumbnails that you have and it should speed up your OpenGL scene. Also with thumbnails, don't forget that you can change the resolution here. So if all your thumbnails are at a <laughs> thousand pixel resolution, um, yes, it's gonna ask more of your computer to render. So be careful with that, leave them as they are and close them even to make them faster. While I'm here, I'm gonna make a little, little disclaimer here. If you are using weighted deform, let it be known. They are very heavy to process. If you see that your scene is struggling, sometimes what I do is I kind of bypass them. So if I know that there's a section with weighted deform, I kind of remove them just by bypassing them like this. For example, here I'm using a weighted deform for the gradients in his hair. So yes, my gradients are gonna look like garbage, but at least I'll be able to see my animation. And then, you know, when I go to export, I just set them back. Yes, it is tedious and it is not something I recommend to do if you're in a studio and a big production and stuff. But if you're working on your own stuff and you see that your weighted deform are giving you trouble, you, you can kind of bypass them temporarily as you work and then just reconnect them as you go. I wish there was an option to just be able to disable them fast, but if I disable them, I don't see my uh, deformer going and stuff. So 
That might be an option. I don't know. I never really researched it because it's really rare that I have to do this because my computer can handle it. But, you know, I'm just giving you options. Okay, so that's it for today, but I'm going to try to give you more options in another video. Thank you.